welcome to my new setup. It's evolving, it's slowly. Hopefully every with every video I want it to get just a little bit better. Hi, it's Lorelei, excited to be chatting with you today about utility NFTs or NFTs that provide some kind of real world value beyond a digital piece of art. NFTs or non-fungible tokens are unique digital assets whose ownership is secured on a blockchain, usually Ethereum. I have an entire playlist on getting up to speed on NFTs. If you want to check that out, just click the card right up here. Now, NFTs have taken a hit lately as crypto prices have crashed. So I thought this was the perfect time to talk about NFT utility or that's the cat. I'm not letting her in because she's very loud. What was I saying? Oh, right. So this is the perfect time to talk about NFT utility or utility NFTs, whichever way you prefer. Long term, the NFTs that are going to retain value and provide an ROI are the ones that have real world use or utility beyond simply being a JPEG piece of art. I'm going to go over exactly what that means and what it looks like and how to identify NFTs out there that have this utility. For the artists watching, I did want to caveat that statement with, of course, there are going to be some NFTs that are just purely art that have crazy value over time. The same way that in the physical world with we have paint on canvas and sculptures that are worth millions, millions and millions of dollars and have been for some time. But that is a very small fraction of the NFTs and NFT artists that are going to be able to achieve that. I think the vast percentage of successful NFT projects are going to be the ones that have this utility NFT type to them. So getting into NFT utilities, there are four categories that we see right now, and those are decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs, hybrid NFTs that have a real world component, NFTs that also provide membership or access to an event, and ENS or the Ethereum name service. While this might sound complex, adding utility to an NFT is actually pretty straightforward as you will see, and there's no reason why a creator who is selling an NFT shouldn't be offering some kind of utility or real world value along with it. We'll talk more about that later, but for right now, let's just get into the video. So first up, we have hybrid NFTs. Hybrid NFTs are unique pieces of digital art that use smart contracts to give you ownership of a physical real world item. For example, if you make a custom print or a piece of custom furniture, you may also sell a digital rendering of that design along with the physical product. I'm working on a project right now called NF Tree, which is going to mint 8-bit digital tree artwork. And for every NF tree sold, we are going to plant a real tree in LA. At least for our first project, we have plans to go to other cities as well. And we're gonna do this in a neighborhood that needs more green space. It's not just gonna be a random tree. And each physical tree will have a little QR code tag on it so people who walk by can scan it and see who owns that tree. I mean, this is kind of a side note, but for this project, you do get more than just a physical tree when you join, but we'll get into that later. Gary Vaynerchuk did a hybrid NFT of his last book, 12 and a half. If you purchased 12 copies of his book within this certain time period, you got an NFT from his V Friends collection. And this might sound like kind of gimmicky, but Gary's book got 1 million pre-orders in 24 hours. And it was one of the biggest advanced orders for a single book in history for a 24 hour period. And as of December, 2021, V Friends was valued at $500 million. I'm filming this in January. I don't think the value has changed that much. That's still a crazy amount of money. And actually what I found most interesting about this whole experiment was the average person ordered pre-ordered 36 copies of his book, which is really fascinating. I'm gonna do a 2022 update on hybrid NFTs, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that. The next category is DAOs. Some NFTs will give you membership in a DAO or a decentralized autonomous organization. DAO members will vote on how to spend pooled crypto funds held in a treasury. Funds are moved automatically when the conditions of the smart contract are met. And a DAO is sort of similar to an employee owned company, but the comparison is not one-to-one. -one, so don't get like too hung up 
on this analogy, but if we look at a traditional organization, the decision-making power rests with a few people at the top of the organization, maybe the CEO and a board. Whereas in a DAO, we have a decentralized organization with no single authority controlling decisions and outcomes. The people who do the work within the organization are the ones that determine the direction of the company. For the visual learners out there, here is a side-by-side -side comparison. And DAOs do have a little bit of a negative connotation right now, which I think is unfair because a DAO was recently kicked off of OpenSea for promoting the passive income aspect of joining their DAO, like they promoted it a little too much. And when you form a DAO for that purpose and start promoting it like that, it means you're behaving more like a security than a piece of art or a membership. And then you are subject to a different set of reg regulations, at least in the United States. It's pretty similar in other countries too. Now I think regulators will eventually... Can you guys hear this? This is what I put up with every day. I'm not letting her in. I think regulators will eventually catch up and figure out whether they want to consider DAOs organizations that issue securities or not. Regardless of what category they end up falling in, I think DAOs are going to be a massively popular way of scaling Web3 companies and projects. DAOs have been around for as long as Ethereum has existed. They're not new, they're just becoming more popular now. And they're pretty easy to set up. You can do it in under an hour. If you're interested in learning more about DAOs, let me know in the comments and I can do a video on that as well. The next utility we have are NFTs that grant the holder membership or access to events and communities. This is pretty straightforward, so I'm just gonna use some examples. We have Lynx DAO, which recently sold out memberships using NFTs for their New Era Golf and Leisure Club, so basically a country club. They were basically selling membership to a country club in the form of an NFT. What they did was actually pretty interesting. The DAO sold memberships to fund their treasury, and they're using that treasury to acquire an actual country club that its members will then have access to. And just to give you a sense of scale, there are 6,300-ish regular level memberships and 2,700 premium memberships, and they sold out in less than a week. You can now buy memberships on the secondary market, um, specifically OpenSea right now, and a regular membership is going for like 0.75 ETH, which is about $2,000 US. Keep in mind that cryptos are down right now, so that number heavily subject to change. It just gives you an idea of how much money people are willing to put behind an NFT if there is real world utility to it. And that's even if it's for something that doesn't exist yet. With NFTree, we also have this type of utility where token holders will get access to our launch party at South by Southwest this year. And then additionally, we haven't figured this out yet, but we want to include some kind of recurring membership like a Soho House membership or pass. Holders of Gary Vaynerchuk's VFriends NFTs get a pass to VCon, which is a multi-day conference with Gary where there are talks on business, marketing, creativity, entrepreneurship, all of the things Gary is known for. And I'd say out of all of them, memberships are probably the most popular utility with NFTs because they are so easy to set up, even if that membership or utility could be something as simple as access to a Discord community. Finally, the last utility we are going to talk about today is ENS or the Ethereum name service. ENS is the most widely integrated blockchain naming standard. It is the Web3 equivalent of a domain name service or DNS, and it allows you to take that super long DeFi wallet address and turn it into something that is easy to remember and share. For example, you can do yourname.eth, I own lauralee.eth, which is much easier to communicate than this long public key. It also allows you to link your DNS names that you already own via a smart contract. So that means like if you already own a URL, you can link it to your ENS. And it looks something like this. You go to apps.ens.domains and search the name that you are interested in. This is mine, lauralee.eth. Uh, once you claim your ENS, you can add your Discord, your Twitter, Telegram, keywords, and avatar, it's all recorded on the blockchain. And the reason mine is kind of empty is that every time you update something, you need to pay gas fees and to have that block added to the ledger. And gas fees have been super high. For me to do it right now, it's like $130. So I have not been doing that, but I will. And this might not seem like an NFT, but that is currently how they are categorized. And as far as value, I see these ENS domains as analogous to buying up domains in Web 1.0 
know, there's value in owning money.eth or podcast.eth. Whatever is relevant to your personal brand or industry, just a word of warning, you do need to have a DeFi wallet to claim your ENS. So check out this video right here if you don't have one already and want to get set up. As I said before, adding utilities to NFTs is not difficult and it's something that you should expect from a creator. As I alluded to with the examples I used, it is not uncommon for an NFT to have several utilities. It may get you into a DAO and give you access to an exclusive event and physical products or merch like with NF Tree or VFriends. Speaking of, I will leave links to all of these below. Um, NF Tree, the NF Tree Discord, VFriends, everything that I mentioned. Um, I'm also going to leave a link to a list I have going on Twitter that helps you find um, NFT drops and crypto projects that you may want to join. But that is it for this week's video. Thank you for sticking around to the end. I hope this was helpful and helped you understand the metaverse, that 1% more. Keep living your legacy and we'll see you next time.